Today is Sunday, February 7, 2021. Happy Super Bowl Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! Welcome to LTJ Live. I'm Lights Camera Jackson. We are here. You are here. Thanks for being here. It is a snowy day in the Northeast. Snow is falling right now, but uh, we've got the Super Bowl tonight. Cozy up on the couch, watching the big game. Who you got? You got the Chiefs, you got the Buccaneers. I'll do my predictions and more coming up. Super Bowl ads, we're looking maybe coming to America. Probably the M. Night Shyamalan movie, Old. That's going to be uh, a Super Bowl movie ad coming up tonight uh, during the big game. I've seen a bunch of new movies that open up this week. There's a lot of awards things happening. There's a lot going on. So uh, join me here on LCJ Live as we talk about all of that. Uh, and we get to your questions and your comments. You can read them right here on LCJ Live. Uh, your number one movie in America is The Little Things with $2.1 million. Uh, number two is The Crude's A New Age, another $1.8 million. It just keeps doing so well, The Crude's A New Age. It just keeps on cruising, making almost $2 million every single weekend. Uh, it's done very well. Uh, the number three movie is The Marksman with another $1 million. Wonder Woman 1984 with 905000 Monster Hunter, still making money. What a terrible movie that is, but it's still making some bucks. $590,000. News of the World, which is getting uh, big awards nominations from the Golden Globes and the SAG Awards for Helena Zangel for Best Supporting Actress. Uh, people wanting to check out this movie in the theaters, another $400,000 for News of the World. We'll get into Golden Globe SAG analysis. Critics' Choice nominations are tomorrow. We'll get into some predictions here in a second on LCJ Live. And the Oscar shortlist will be announced on Tuesday in many major categories. So we'll get into all of that here in just a little bit. Uh, let's see, Fatal, 170,000. Uh, the War with Grandpa, 167,000. Promising Young Woman, getting a lot of nominations, especially for Kerry Mulligan. It added $220,000 in theaters this weekend. And rounding out your top 10, the only major new release of the weekend, the animated film Earwig and the Witch, with $100,000 Friday through Sunday. 133000 over the five-day open, and it is also on HBO Max. This is an Oscar-qualified animated feature. The first CG one from iconic Studio Ghibli. So making a little bit of money, but I didn't expect it to do huge numbers. With The Crudes of New Age still doing well, and no new family films out for two more weekends, uh, Tom and Jerry, not till Feb 26, Raya and the Last Dragon from Disney, not till March 5. I think The Crudes will continue to do well, and The War with Grandpa will make a little more money as well. I have seen a bunch of new movies that open this week. Tomorrow, you'll get my rapid review of Land, starring Robin Wright, which is in theaters on Friday. She also directs this drama. I've seen The Mauritanian, which is nominated for two Golden Globes, Best Actor in a Drama for Tahar Rahim, and Best Supporting Actress for Jodie Foster. If you want to read my review of The Mauritanian, which is in theaters Friday, you can go to lights-camera-jackson.com. I've seen Judas and the Black Messiah, which is out in theaters and on HBO Max this Friday. Best Supporting Actor nomination so far this season for Daniel Kaluuya. He's pretty good. I don't think the movie's outstanding. It's, it's a fairly standard arc that we go down, but there are definitely some interesting moments. And uh, Lakeith Stanfield, pretty good as well. Uh, but again, not an amazing movie, but I liked some of it. I liked some of the different scenes, the character angles we get, but at the same time, it's not really new, the perspectives we get. So yeah, it's a, a tricky one for me to completely fall in love with, but I understand why Daniel Kaluuya is getting all this attention. I've seen a film called The World to Come, which is in theaters this Friday. Uh, Catherine Waterston and Vanessa Kirby. This is the Vanessa Kirby movie everybody should be talking about because she and Catherine Waterston are great in this. It's in select theaters, The War to Come, uh, set in about the 1850s, 1860s, that range, uh, just in western New York, not far from me. And uh, I don't want to give too much of the story away. Casey Affleck's also in it, but, but I do recommend you see this film, The World to Come. Minari is opening, I guess, yes, in select theaters on Friday before it goes to VOD in a couple of weeks. Uh, this is getting some uh, SAG Awards nominations, including lead actor for Steven Young and the cast. Again, it's a movie I like. I think it's got third act problems. Just like the several other films out lately, the third act, it, it, a movie can really drop in quality, and that's how I feel overall about Minari. It doesn't emotionally move me in the powerhouse sort of way that I wanted it to, but there are some good moments between the grandson and the grandmother, that dynamic, that uh, uh, relationship. 
but I don't love Minari, but it's out in theaters Friday getting some attention. Also, French Exit. Now, Michelle Pfeiffer got a Golden Globe nomination for French Exit, which I think is insane because this is one of the wackiest, worst movies I have seen in a long time. I am not a fan of French Exit. Every scene is just is preposterous, some of the stuff that goes on in French Exit. Wow, it's just absolutely stunning. Um, it's not a comedy. It's not funny. Uh, frankly, I Care A Lot, which is on Netflix on the 19th with Rosamund Pike, which I've seen. I'm not going to give my opinion, but I can tell you it's also not a comedy. So the Golden Globes obviously plays fast and loose with all those things. But French Exit, I am not a fan of this movie. I can't believe that she got in over others who really deserved the nominations, like Meryl Streep for two movies, The Prom and Let Them All Talk. But you had Michelle Pfeiffer come in, Rosamund Pike came in, Kate Hudson for a film called Music that is out this Friday, uh, this Wednesday in IMAX theaters and then VOD on Friday. That was a surprise nomination the other day from the Globes. Um, but yeah, uh, not a fan of French Exit. What's up, uh, Brady Green 20? Thanks for being here on LCJ Live. It is Super Bowl Sunday. We're also talking awards, nominations, and a bunch of movies coming out this week. I have not yet seen Fear of Rain, which is coming out Friday from Lionsgate. Lionsgate has a second movie uh, on VOD this Friday. Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. This could go either way. Really could. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it uh, this week. I'll have my thoughts on it later this week. I should be checking that out. I've also seen another Lionsgate movie that comes out on the 19th in select theaters and VOD um, called Silk Road. I really can't talk about Silk Road, but I, yet, but I will say this. Uh, Jason Clark, if you're a fan of Jason Clark, keep this on your radar for sure. Uh, Silk Road, that comes out on the 19th. Lionsgate has a lot coming out over these next several weeks. So yeah, a lot of big movies this week, a lot to keep track of, uh, but uh, yeah, it's exciting. Uh, I, I hope we get a lot of these films to be in the top 10 because we've been seeing pretty much over and over again the same seven or eight movies in the top 10 for the last six, seven weeks. So to get Judas and the Black Messiah in here, to get the Mauritanian in here, Land, World to Come, uh, we'll see how many theaters Minari and French Exit are in, but I'd love to see three or four new movies come into this top 10. Little Things, you know, a newbie just came in. It's, it's still number one. But um, to get three or four new ones in here and not be re-releases, uh, it'll be cool next week. Hopefully that happens for the box office. Then Nomadland will be in theaters and a few more before the end of the month. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to all of that happening. Now, we had the Golden Globe nominations Wednesday. We had the SAG nominations on Thursday. Obviously, the big surprise with the SAG nominations is Amy Adams for Hillbilly Elegy. We've all expected Glenn Close to be nominated for Supporting Actress, but Amy Adams to be in the Lead Actress category. She got snub uh, snubbed by the Globes, got in SAG. I personally don't think she's getting in the Lead Actress Critics' Choice category tomorrow, um, but we will see. But that's, that's the surprise, but SAG loves Amy Adams. Now, Critics' Choice, Delroy Lindo. If Delroy Lindo doesn't get in lead actor tomorrow, I mean, so many movie buffs are going to just throw their hands up in the air and go, what is going on? So Delroy Lindo for Defy Bloods should be on that lead actor list tomorrow. He's like the Robert De Niro of this year. Remember when Robert De Niro got snubbed by uh, Golden Globes and SAG for The Irishman and everybody was like, what? How is this happening? Then he got nominated for Critics' Choice but didn't get nominated for the BAFTA or the Oscar. Now, Delroy Lindo could still get nominated for the BAFTA and the Oscar, but um, the fact that that uh, these similarities are happening, that, that's what I see as far as this year, but he should be on that Best Actor list tomorrow. As I tweeted yesterday, I believe, Soul could become the sixth animated movie ever to be nominated for the Critics' Choice Award for Best Picture. That's a big deal. It'd be the first since Toy Story 3 back in 2010. It came out, 2011, the announcements. So it's been 10 years since an animated movie has been nominated for the Critics' Choice Award for Best Picture. The uh, first one to do it was Shrek. Up and Toy Story 3 did it as well. Same with the Academy Awards. A couple movies nominated for Critics' Choice that weren't nominated for the Best Picture Oscar. Pixar's Finding Nemo and WALL-E. Yeah, they were also on those 10 best lists for, for the Critics' Choice Awards for Best Picture. If there were 10 nominees for the Oscars those years, yeah, th those two would probably be in there as well. Maybe even The Incredibles. Maybe even Ratatouille. And as I wrote, Ratatouille is the one that surprises me because that movie was all about um, criticism with the Anton Ego character, and critics fell in love with Ratatouille. So many of them, I had it as my number one. So many others did as well. Uh, so I'm a little surprised that Ratatouille actually wasn't on the Critics' Choice 10 Best list that year. Uh, but this could be Soul, the sixth animated to do it, the fifth from Pixar. It did win the Critics' Choice Award for Best Animated Feature a couple weeks ago. But 
I still think Wolf Walkers has a chance with the Hollywood Foreign Press, even though the Hollywood Foreign Press nominated Soul for uh, the score as well as the film. I still think Wolf Walkers has a shot. And we'll see what BAFTA does and what the Annie Awards do and, of course, the Academy Awards. We are still five weeks away, five weeks tomorrow, from the Oscar nominations. But on Tuesday, we get a lot of answers to a lot of questions because the shortlist will be unveiled for nearly half of the Oscar categories, including the animated short film category, which will be narrowed down from 90 to 10. About 90 get submitted every year, or at least qualified enough to do so, and then they narrow it down to 10, which will then, of course, be narrowed down to 5 on March 15th, Monday morning. But uh, on Tuesday, we'll find out which ones I've seen, which ones I haven't seen yet, which directors I've talked with. This will be really interesting. What major studios are involved? Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks, Sony. You know, who's involved? Which smaller studios are involved? Uh, it's going to be really interesting because I've seen a lot of great animated shorts already this year. Uh, but which ones are getting in? Is the Maggie Simpson short that debuted in front of Onward in theaters going to get on this list? Remember the last one, Longest Daycare, which debuted with Ice Age Continental Drift in 2012, became an Oscar nominee. Is that going to happen this time for Maggie Simpson? We will have to see. Uh, yeah, we got somebody saying the jersey's on backwards. In my world, the jersey's on, on forwards with Jackson. Yes, it absolutely is. How many people vote for the Critics' Choice Awards? Well, that's a good question. The answer, the number's up to what? A little over 400, I think? When I joined, which was the end of 2011, but I was too late to vote for that year, so I couldn't vote till the next year, but I joined at the end of 2011. Um... It was just under 300, I believe. And then adding television, combining, adding new people, I think we're over 400 by now. Still a small group, but much more than the Hollywood Foreign Press, which is, what, about 90 people? So it's more than that, but significantly less than the Oscars and the SAG Awards, certainly. All the SAG voters. Brady Green 20, any best pick buzz for Nomadland, which is in select IMAX theaters now. It'll be on Hulu and in drive-ins and indoor theaters starting on Feb 19. Absolutely best picture buzz for Nomadland. Um, though, it's interesting. When Frances McDormand won a SAG award for, I don't think it was three billboards. It might have been, or it was Olive Kittredge a few years before. I think it might have been that. And she said, look, I come out of the woods every few years. I appreciate you you honoring me with these awards, and she could very well win Best Actress again. But she says, we got to give new people a break. You know, we got to give them, the younger people, the ones coming up in this industry, a shot. I don't know if anybody's going to really take that to heart and choose somebody else for lead actress this year over her. We'll have to see. Uh, but as far as Nomadland for Best Picture, again, I don't think it's an amazing film. It's a good film. I respect it. I respect the movie making, the story, the intentions with it. Um, I like it more than Judas and the Black Messiah, Minari, and certainly more than French Exit, and News of the World, and Promising Young Woman, and uh, all of those. Not as much as The Little Things, which I'm glad Jared Leto's getting in, uh, but I'll get into that in a second. But Nomadland, um, definitely a Best Picture favorite at this point. Now, The Little Things, uh, I really like this film. Um, John Lee Hancock, I've seen most of his films, and he skews a little older with his, his target audience and his storytelling, but his perspective is so good. And Jared Leto, I'm glad the movie's getting recognition. It happens to be through Jared Leto. I think Rami Malek's better in the film, and I think Denzel is good. Jared Leto's good in the film. They all deliver. But do I think if I wanted one representation of the little things, would I have wanted it to be Jared Leto? Not necessarily, but I'm glad that he's getting recognition, he's getting the attention, and that the film is being seen, and that people are liking it and want to recognize it. Um, yeah, it's a good film. I was asked uh, by my, my colleague Mike Sargent of the Too Fast, Two Films podcast, you're like, but didn't you think Denzel kind of just walked through this movie? And I said, it's not your traditional Denzel-dominant movie. It's a three-person film with a story that surrounds them all, that weaves in and out, and I think it signals a change in Denzel's career, that he chose a project like this to say, all right, I'm getting older, I can't do all the crazy action movies anymore, or do these loud uh, characters, you know, uh, fences or, or things. You know, Roman J. Israel was a different kind of character, and I think we're seeing a shift in, in his choices here, that he wants a little older, a little more sophisticated, a little more uh, a movie that makes you think. And that's what The Little Things does. 
And so him working with Rami, working with Jared, and the firecracker moments that they have are great, but also a lot of those quiet moments and the pieces of the story building and building over the course of the film. Um, so we'll see. You know, the, the screenplay is very good. I wish the screenplay would get more attention. Um, but Jared Leto getting nominations uh, for Best Supporting Actor so far. Critics, Choi uh, Critics' Choice will see tomorrow. Golden Globe and SAG nominations so far. Chloe Zhao for Best Director for uh, Nomadland. Um, definitely a nominee. I don't know if she'll win at this point. It's it's too early to call. The foreign press seems to love Mank and the Trial of the Chicago 7, which have two white guys as directors, but um, uh, David Fincher and Aaron Sorkin. We'll see what kind of roles that all plays, who gets nominated for Critics' Choice. Critics' Choice tomorrow for director could be as many as seven, uh, because it, that has happened in the past. And the majority could be women. It could be half and half, three and three, for six nominees, we'll see what it ends up being. Uh, but Chloe, definitely a, a contender in that directing category. So isn't it exciting? It's a lot happening. As, as football is wrapping up here today, uh, we get into award season that all us movie fans have been waiting for. You know, these nominations normally come out in December and January, and now here we are, going to be February and March with all this happening and the shows being in March. Uh, today is the 7th. Three weeks from today is the Golden Globe Awards on NBC. Four weeks from today is the Critics' Choice Awards on The CW. So, it's exciting. It is. And uh, with the Critics' Choice nominations tomorrow, the Oscar shortlist on Tuesday, more analysis and, and more to come for sure. I hope you all enjoy the big game tonight. It should be a good one. I am predicting, are you ready for my predictions for tonight? Chiefs 38, Bucks 22! Kansas City Chiefs, 38. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 22. That is my prediction for tonight for the Super Bowl. Who you got to win? Chiefs or the Bucks? How do you think the weekend will do at that halftime show? Do you see the, on Twitter uh, that account when Daniel Craig hosted SNL and the weekend was the uh, musical guest? And all it is, every Friday this person posts Daniel Craig saying, ladies and gentlemen, oh, the weekend. And everybody's just happy. Oh, it's the weekend. And it is the weekend, you know, so, so all of that. Um, how will the weekend do as the Super Bowl halftime show? And uh, the Equalizers tonight, Queen Latifah, series premiere, CBS, right after the game. How many people will stick around to watch Queen Latifah on The Equalizer? You know, she always has in her contract this clause that says, I cannot die in any of my movies because I want to be involved in a sequel. Well... Clearly, there's a clause of that in the Equalizer that her character can't die until the series finale, if that's even the case. Uh, probably why she wanted to, you know, pick one of these projects to stick around. And uh, and uh, so that's tonight, the Equalizer, 10 o'clock on CBS. All right. Who's going to win? Chiefs to the Bucks. I got Brady Green saying no. Uh, no to the Chiefs, the Bucks. What do you got there? Send me your questions, your comments. When we're back here next Sunday, we'll do more analysis of what's going on with Critics' Choice and, and the Oscar shortlist. But also, um, we, uh, we'll talk about all these new movies that have been opening up and more coming to theaters and more coming to your homes, VOD streaming services. Uh, it has been 47 and a half weeks since I've been in an indoor movie theater in the state of New York. We're going to come up on one year on March 12 of that happening. Um, so, wow. Yeah, crazy, right? A year since I've been in an indoor movie theater in the state of New York. Last time I was in an indoor movie theater was Tenet on August 31st in the state of Vermont. Because I had to go to Vermont. Because that was the closest place to see Tenet at that time. Because none of these indoor theaters were open here in New York. We've got four near me. Um, but we'll see how many more open over the next several weeks and months, we'll have to see. I, see, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying well and positive. And if you want all my reviews, go to lights-cameradashjackson.com. Follow me on Twitter at LCJ Reviews and Instagram at lightscamjackson. Enjoy the big game. Get out your jersey. Get out your snacks. Turn on the TV. Watch a big game, the Super Bowl. We'll see who wins, the Chiefs to the Bucks and the movie ads and the television ads and the pop culture related ads that everybody will be talking about over the next couple of days and immediately on social media. We will see what happens. I'm LCJ. Thank you for watching LCJ Live and I will see you back here next Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Enjoy it. Stay well. And next Sunday is also Valentine's Day, so that'll be fun. Uh, take care. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks.